Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna go over Hack the Box versus Try Hack Me. I got this question a lot, even on Instagram, on Discord, at DEF CON. Like, where should I start? If I was a beginner, if I was learning today to get into cybersecurity, where should I go? There's so many different platforms, but I'm gonna combine these two and compare Try Hack Me versus Hack the Box. So if you guys are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and share. Let's get into it and have some fun. Alrighty then. So if I was to start out today and I had the option of these two platforms, Try Hack Me and Hack the Box, I would definitely start out with Try Hack Me. I'm very familiar with both platforms. I use both platforms but I think Hack the Box is more for advanced users, but we'll get into that shortly. So if you're, for an example, total, total beginner in 2025, and you're saying, I wanna get into cybersecurity, where should I start? I never heard of Hack the Box or Try Hack Me. I would say start out with Try Hack Me. It's a little more user-friendly. It's more hand-holding. Even though Hack the Box has their academy, but their academy, even, even so, is a little more I would say intermediate to advanced topics or the way they present it. It's, I think you should have some experience before you go into there. That's my opinion. So you land on the page, tryhackme.com, you sign in your account and you are brought to this dashboard. So let's navigate around here for a bit, shall we? So if we just go to learn, learn hands-on, we have challenges, we have get certified. We'll get into this in a second. We have a SOC simulator. So if you're looking to get into SOC or security engineering, you have a simulator that shows you real-time alerts that you need to triage, which I thought was really cool. And a threat hunting simulator. This is brand new. I haven't even checked this out. So let's check this out for a second. So uncover hidden threats and expose blind spots with real attackers based training. Get started today. I don't know if I can do this. Let's see. I'm not going to do it, but I guess I can start out with this health hazard and then go on to dark docker cat and then go on and go on so maybe i'll check this out later on but you see there's different scenarios and you can see your progress and your stats and you can see the leaderboard obviously i'm the only one here and i have zero points and ignore that for now that's on my other machine all right so let's come back to the dashboard so let's go back to learn and learn hands-on so the cool thing about here, you have different paths. So let's go ahead. I guess we can start out with learning roadmap, right? So if you're brand new to cybersecurity, you have fundamentals, you have computer science basics, we have pre-security. So you can do this path even before you get into security so you can see what's up. So let's right click on this, or I guess click on it. And you can see this is gonna teach you the prerequisites the technical knowledge and all that stuff to get into cyber. And you can see here, uh, offensive security intro, defensive security intro, and careers in cyber. This gives you a little bit of the offensive side and the defensive side, also known as the quote unquote red team and the blue team. And then you have some careers. So that'll show you different kinds of paths, maybe security engineering, penetration testing, uh, digital forensics, SOC analysts, blah, blah, blah. The, the list goes on, right? And then from there, you can go on to network fundamentals. And this is what I say, always learn operating systems, networking, because this is super, super critical because anything that you do in cybersecurity sits on a network. So understanding what is a network, what is TCP, what is UDP, what is the OSI model, blah, 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 right? Intro to LAN, which is local area network. You have to understand the LAN segment behind your firewall because if you're on an internal assessment and I say it's a slash 24 subnet and you don't know how many hosts that is and how many bits and bytes and all that fun stuff, you're going to be in trouble, right? The OSI models, um, packets and frames, extending your network, which extending your network is outside of your LAN segment. You get beyond your firewall. Now you're on the internet where all the crazies are, right? So then section three, how does the web work? You know, you have DNS. Uh, DNS and details, HTTP in detail, how websites work, putting it all together. And then your Linux fundamentals, part one, part two, part three. Windows fundamentals, 
this is what I said. Network, didn't I just say that? Networking, understanding different operating systems, so uh, Linux and Windows, and that's it. And then you should be good to go for the pre-security aspect. So once you have the pre-security aspect, you can start going into different paths here, uh, cybersecurity 101, and the list goes on. So now, once you have this all sorted out, now you can say, okay, what tickles your fancy, right? The security analyst uh, in it for you, penetration tester, uh, security engineering, and then you can start going down those paths. And what the cool thing is, once you go down these paths, they have a certification that's associated with it. So for an example, if you're looking to become a security analyst, you have the security analyst level one certification, also known as SAL1. I took this exam, it was really, really cool. Uh, I haven't taken the PT1 yet, the penetration tester one, but you can see that they have a penetration tester certification and then, but they don't have one for security engineering, but you can see here when you, if you want to become a security engineer and you just say what's next and you can explore more rooms, right? So let's look at the learning paths. This is what I also think is really cool. If you want to look at the difficulty, you can say all easy, medium, hard status to see your status if you completed anything and i got a tickle on my nose so you can see here what i just talked about security cybersecurity 101 junior penetration tester pre-security these are easy and you can see the SOC level one is easy SOC level two is medium security engineer devsecops etc so you can see red teaming uh, pen test plus web fundamentals offensive security web pen testing uh, def defending Azure, and then advanced endpoint investigation. Okay, so that's all they have on Try Hack Me at the moment. And then you can just look and poke around. So I would say if you're brand new, and then you can just go to search here, and you can see all the new ones right here, and they have it by hard, easy, the level of difficulty, and if it's a challenge or a walkthrough. So a challenge is like a CTF, a walkthrough is just like, going through uh, introduction and it's just going to show you a lot of theory aspects of the of the topic okay and then you can compete in weekly leagues right so you can check out weekly leagues let's say start learning i don't even know what i just clicked on i, I did this a while back but i guess you have to uh pay for the cloud license which i'm not doing today but yeah, that's a little bit about Try Hack Me. So if you're brand new to the field, check this out, go down this path before you jump into Hack the Box. So now if you've done all this, now let's go ahead and jump on Hack the Box, right? So Hack the Box is amazing. It's an awesome platform. But to be honest, I think it's a little more advanced than Try Hack Me. We can go to my profile, right? So I've done a lot on, on Hack the Box. I have a, you know, 44th global, I'm a guru. Um, I'm not a guru all by myself, it's team effort. This is what I always say, like if you're learning and uh, if you can get with a, you know, a study group, a team, and we all have different, different expertise, right? Collaborating is, is really, really cool in this field and that's what I do, right? And I, I appreciate everyone on my team, I appreciate everyone in the field and in the community that has helped me throughout my journey. It's not only me and it's not only you, it's all of us, right? So yeah, so let's go ahead and go to starting point. So if you're brand new on Hack the Box, when you're done with Try Hack Me, you can go ahead and do tier zero, tier one, tier two. To be honest, I don't think I did any of these challenges. Um, the reason being is because I did Try Hack Me for a while and I had some offensive security penetration testing uh, experience under my belt and I understood those networking, those operating system. I understand some of those concepts. So I just skipped that and went into the machines, but we'll get into that shortly. But remember, if you're brand new, you're coming from Try Hack Me, check this out, right? And the cool thing is it walks you through the steps and you can look at the official write-up if you get stuck and it walks you through everything, right? First, you need to download your spawn box, then you start the machine up, and then, you know, what does the acronym VM stand for? Virtual machine and blah, blah, blah. You just go through, go through all this stuff. It's very easy. This is the very easy section. Okay. 
And then you have different seasons on Hack the Box. So if you have a team, you can check, you know, check out the seasons. I wouldn't do this right away. I would get some experience under your belt, play a few boxes, maybe a few retired boxes, maybe watch some walkthroughs and just in case you get stuck. But they do have the option of having a season. So like our ranking for, I think this is our team ranking, I think. Um, I think I, I don't really look. Let's see leaderboard. Uh, the, I guess these are the three guys and let's see ours is. I don't even know. Uh, let's see ISP. Let's see if I can search for ISP. Uh, hackers. That's weird. Uh, I one, two, three, seven. Maybe does it have to start with it? That's weird. All right. No worries. I don't know. I never really tinker with it, with this to be honest, but anyhow, I just go ahead and do my do my machine that's on the season. I never really poke around the actual platform, but then you can go to machines, right? So once you go to machines, I would start out with the retired machines and come over here. Let me bring this up so you can see this. Uh, right here we have sort by. We can say release date. I don't really don't worry about that right now. Difficulty. You can just go to easy and whatever. I would see Windows and Linux, right? So this is gonna give you all the easy ones, all right? So once you have all these easy ones, I would say done for the most part. I don't have them all done, but I have a lot of them done. And if you don't have a paid subscription, if you don't have a VIP subscription, you might have to do, let's see, advanced search. Uh, not language, interests, vulnerability, no. I guess, you know, you just have to look at the free ones. I guess the retired, some of them are free, but most of them are for the VIP. And then you can do like machines to to-do list. Like I put these on my to-do list. I guess this was a long time ago because I did this a really long time ago. And then you can see schedule release boxes. This is what's uh, scheduled in the mix. So you see Phantom, Lock, previous guardian and then this is going to be this is going to be the new boxes and these are the ones that are going to be retiring so once these are retired they go into the retired machines and then you can probably see a walkthrough and all that stuff and then once you do that you can start doing the active machines once you have a your methodology down your skill set up and all that stuff and then if you want to take it a step further, you can start doing some challenges. Some challenges are pretty cool and it'll show you different kinds of category like reverse engineering, web, OSINT, AI, ML. And you can just click on the, you know, click on it and start doing the challenge. Okay. Then you have Sherlock's. Sherlock's are pretty cool. You can see different kinds of challenges here. Category DFIR, digital forensics, uh, incident response. Threat Intel, DFIR. A lot of these are DFIR, a lot of blue team stuff, the Sherlock. And you can see the active ones. And then you can see like the retired ones. Same kind of concept, right? So it's pretty cool stuff. And then you have tracks. This is similar to the paths inside of Try Hack Me. So you have uh, detecting Active Directory attacks, very easy. And then you have intro to red team, intro to blue team, and then reverse engineering, binary exploitation, hardware exploitation, active directory exploitation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You pick and choose what you want to do and you can go to rankings. And then once you, once you start, I guess, ranking, you can check out your team. If you're on a team, an individual and all that stuff, like uh, hall of fame, these are all the people that are, you know, all good in the hood. And then pro labs, these are paid labs that you can try to do. Some of them are free, I guess. Um, and you can check out these to see where you, where your skill set's at, right? And this is like a full on network that you have to do a penetration test and you have to start doing whatever, red teaming, whatever you wanna do in order for you to pass or in order for you to complete the lab. And Fortress here, we have different ones here. And same thing, same concept. And then the list goes on. So I want to stop at the academy. 
So I'm not going to showcase too much on the Academy because this is a paid platform. Hopefully it authenticates me. If it doesn't, then it's not meant to be. Okay. So I'm not, this is all I'm going to show because I don't, I don't want to get in trouble. So once you get familiar with some of the boxes, you can start doing the Academy. The Academy is really cool because you can say like, I'll go to my certificates. I only have two certificates from Hack the Box, which is my CPTS and CBBH. And I might do this junior one. I'm about 50% through the course. And then CAPE. CAPE is one I would like to do. And CDSA, right? These, these are three that I would love to do from, try, uh, from Hack the Box. And the junior one I would like to do just because I hear it's like a bit of red team and a bit of blue team. Even though it's a junior cert, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past hack the box. It's probably maybe, I don't know, maybe intermediate, maybe, because they say their easy boxes are really easy, but you know, maybe back in the day, like lame was super easy, but they definitely consider easy, I would say medium. That's the difficulty level in my opinion. But yeah, so that's, I'm not gonna click around on here to sign up for the Academy. I love this platform. I've learned so much, but that's the difference between these two hack the box and try hack me. And as you, as you learn, as you progress in your, you know, you can use this on your resume. I don't really, um, but say for an example, let me go back to my profile here. I can say, okay, I have guru rankings on hack the box. So if a hiring manager understands about hack the box, they know, Guru is at a certain level. Um, there is a few levels. I think after this is the last one. I cannot say, I can't even say this word. Uh, Omniscience, whatever, however you say that word. And then on Try Hack Me, I think I am, I don't even know, Guardian or something. So yeah, Guardian. And you can see the rankings right here. So Guardian is past Guru on... Uh, try hack me so you know the best one you can do is external but yeah i i was i was really going at it and i, I definitely have to step up my game but you know life happens and you know things happen so those are the two differences remember guys if you're brand new to the field start with try hack me and then segue into your uh, hack the box journey so that's it for today thank you so much for viewing and i'll see you guys in the next one Oh yeah, don't forget, please like, subscribe, and share. And I would like to know in the comments which platform you like and why. Put it in the comments below. Thank you, have a good one.